is the Revisionary Podcast with your host, Juan Carlos. The Revisionary Podcast. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Revisionary Podcast. I'm your host, Juan Carlos. First and foremost, before we get any further, if you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, go ahead and press the button. I I really just don't want any of you to miss any of the episodes that we have. We have a lot of great stories that are ready to come out. For example, today we have Caitlin Rupert coming onto the show. And if you haven't heard of Caitlin, she's full of wonderful stories. I was honestly very excited to get her on the show. And I'm very excited for this story. Caitlin has lived all over the world and has had so many experiences and so many crazy stories. Hopefully this goes well so that she'll want to come back and we can hear more of her amazing stories. I actually got to meet Caitlin because my partner and I once got really ambitious and decided to run multiple shows in multiple cities. And two of our shows happened to line up. One was in Harlem while the other one was in D.C. My partner and I were down in D.C. running that Washington show. And Caitlin was performing at our show in Harlem. I guess our host must have been running a little late, the person we left in charge for the Harlem show. So Caitlin was super helpful communicating with us and letting us know what was going on in Harlem and keeping us in the loop. And helping us make sure that there was a smooth transition. So I forever appreciate her for that. Also, she runs a wonderful podcast based on the show Love After Lockup. If you haven't listened to her podcast, go ahead. And if you haven't watched the show and you love reality TV show, I recommend it. Because this one is definitely one that captivated me from the first moment. Without further ado, let's see if we can get Caitlin on the line. Hey, Caitlin, how are you? Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm, we're so glad to have you on the Revisionary Podcast today. Our revisionaries are really excited to hear from you. What have you been up to? How have you been? I don't want to say good because I feel like that would be a dirty, dirty lie. I, <laughs> I have been, I've been in the world. How about that? I've been in the world. I, uh, I had some weird job loss and moving a lot of different pieces around, but. But. I'm excited because I realized that I might, if I get the job that I want, I'll be making twice as much. So Whoa, that's a blessing in disguise. Yep. Broke for a bit, rich for a day. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that's a saying, but it is now. You know, what are you going to do with all that money? That's when the stockbrokers start calling you. Exactly. Well, no, honestly, I was thinking, because I don't have a job right now, I'm like, oh, maybe I should research you know, what it is to buy stocks and stuff. Right, how to trade. <laughs> is that normal to do when you have no money? To be like, hey, let me uh, let me research how to how to use money once I maybe have it. I mean, I feel like right, they say like part of life is like preparation, right? So you're just preparing for the life you're going to live. Exactly. Thank you. I'm glad I'm glad you understand my vision. <laughs> <laughs> I support your vision. I'll go a step further. That's because you want to borrow money from me eventually, right? I mean, yeah, but damn, you ain't got to air me out on air. <laughs> <laughs> look we all need a little help when we uh when we need it <laughs> yeah i look i it's funny because i've been talking to people and like people have been doing all sorts of like uh different things especially because you know we're still for those of you guys who are listening we're still during the pandemic right now um have you what have you been doing creatively nothing oh <laughs> uh, no i've i've still been doing i i have my podcast so i've been doing my podcast not as much as i'd like to be doing it but you know to a certain extent honestly i've just been reading a lot Ooh, okay which isn't really creative but it is kind of because i feel like if, if you're adding to your own diet of of other people's creativity it kind of inspires you for later no, I agree. Also, I think with books are special because when you're writing jokes, sometimes a lot of it is, at least from my my point of view, a lot of it is understanding perspective. And books puts you in someone else's shoes and it gives you a deeper understanding of different perspectives, which you can use to yeah. bring out in your comedy. Yeah. And like I, I just read uh, the, the book I read recently was The Power of Habit, which is is literally talking about that, like getting oh, in really? people's heads and why why people have habits and why how the um how people are marketed to using their habits and it's it was really interesting and i was like ah this is the stuff that comics do because we try and get into people's heads <laughs> and i think it will help me in the end <laughs> no, i think so um so i wanted to ask you why don't you tell the people a little bit about your podcast and what what you do all right so my podcast is called pot after lockup you have done it um yes it's great <laughs> it's a it's a podcast about the show love after lockup which chronicles when people who have been in jail and met people on dating websites while in jail 
because that is a thing. Uh, they come out and they meet up with these people that they've usually never met in person or maybe just like via a few visits at the prison. And then they try and make a relationship work. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't go well. So each episode is another episode with a comic and we kind of go bit by bit and we talk about our relationships uh, if we've been to jail if we've dated anybody in jail we talk about what the characters do during well i shouldn't say characters they're real people what the what the people do during that that episode and if we would do things different which is i guess kind of like your podcast like yeah would you do it different (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean i guess there are some crossover there but i will tell you i had never watched that show until uh, caitlin put me on and that show is absolutely bananas i'm a few episodes behind but I did keep watching it. Oh, you're still watching it? <laughs> <Yeah>. oh, <that's laughs> <great>. <laughs> a few episodes back, but that show is absolutely bananas. I need to catch up. Yeah, no, it's 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 amazing, and it makes you feel really good about yourself because uh, when you watch it, you see how trash other people are, and you're like, I'm not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cede the floor to you. The stage is yours. Tell us your story as it happened. Okay, so I had lived in the Virgin Islands. I lived in St. Croix. Um, This was 2011, so it is a while ago. So I I just don't want anybody to be too terribly concerned for me, (laughs) my, (laughs) my, my mental health and what kind of a crazy person I am. But to be fair, it basically all started because I used to work at this bar and restaurant It was like the hot spot to go. Um, Everybody used to hang out there all the time. But it was also kind of a disaster when it came to the staff was drunk all the time, including me. I was drunk a lot. But the other thing was that all of the people who were in charge, all of the managers were all men. All the managers, all the bartenders, except for one bartender who was a woman, but I'm also pretty sure she was maybe a li- at least a little bit of a man. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> she, she was a hefty woman. But a lot of times the guys would hit on the women. And I was single, but I just, if I don't like you, I don't like you. And if what I want is for you to basically... I, I, as we would say in the hood, I don't play. <laughs> so, <laughs> if I'm not playing, I'm not playing. Don't play with me. So right. these guys would try and play with me sometimes and I was not having it. So there was one time where everybody was wasted and we were in the cooler and the, all the waitresses were in there with the bartender and he had a girlfriend and he was asking everybody to flash him and all the other girls were flashing him. And I was just sitting there going boobs. Cause I, you know, I'm gay too. So right. <laughs> I, I, I date, I date men and women. So I was like, Oh, boobies. Okay. And then he was like, yeah, now show me your boobs. And I was like, Oh no, I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. And he was like, all the other girls are doing it. Why aren't you going to do it? I'm like, Oh no, you don't get to see my boobs. No. Right. And so I like told him no several times. And, um, it got to the point where like, it became really obvious that like I wasn't the cool one or whatever. And pretty much from that day forward, he kind of treated me different. And also his girlfriend didn't like me for various other reasons, which is a whole nother story. But there was one night where he decided he was going to mess with me. And so usually at the end of the night, the bartender would give you all of your tips. That's just how this place worked. Right. And at some point during the night, if if a table got ste- if somebody got steak, they got unlimited beer. Okay. So if you get a steak, you get unlimited beer all night. Now, this whole table was split between two checks, but the entire table got steaks. So the entire table was getting free beer all night. Right. Now, I had at some point put all of the beer under just the one table, even though, you know, it doesn't matter because right, they're all getting unlimited. free beer regardless. So then at the end of the night, when he was supposed to be giving me my tips, he says, and I'm taking uh, $12 out because you um, you charged this table wrong. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, well, you put six beers on there. And I was like, yeah, you know that they were, the other table was also, I was like, it's the same thing. They're all just getting free beer. And he's like, yeah, but you put it on the wrong ticket. And I'm like, what? No, I just didn't put two tickets up. Like, that's stupid. Why would I put two tickets up? Right. And he was like, well, you did it wrong. So I'm going to take it out of your check. And I got real, I got real crazy. <laughs> oh Lord! I did. I started cursing a lot, um, and I told him that I would come up over that bar and I would get my money. <laughs> Woo! And then I called my other manager and I, I like told him what was happening, and he was like, "Look, 
just don't take your tips. I'll give them to you in the morning. And I was like, okay, fine. He's like, just calm down. I don't know why he's doing that. I'll take care of it. So I was like, okay, fine. So then I come in the next day to get the rest of my money and he gives it to me. And then he goes, and then I took $12 out for the, the, you know, thing you recorded wrong. And I was like, wait, wait, what? Come again? You did what? Wait, which so, manager did this? The like the one that was being reasonable or the one who was messing with you? The one that was supposed to be being reasonable. Oh. But he he also had a history of he uh he didn't promote me to bartender because um again, I wouldn't like hit on him or anything. And he promoted another girl instead. And I was like, wait, why did you pr- promote her over me? I've been here longer. And he says, yeah, but you know, she, she would make a better bartender. I'm like, I literally already bartend. Like I bartended at another restaurant right. at the same time. So I was like, I bartend. I know all of the, the Island drinks. What are you talking about? And he was like, well, I want somebody I can train from the, the start. Come to find out He had been hitting on her the whole time. And also one night he was supposed to drive her home when she was drunk. And instead he drove her to his house. Oh no. Was she okay? Yeah. Yeah. She ended up the, she, she was like, ha ha, no, don't bring me home and whatever. But, and he did, but still that's like real creepy. Right. No, that's super creepy. So so (laughs) he was also creepy. They're all freaking, I shouldn't say they were all creepy there. I had one good, good manager, um, Carlo, uh, shout out to Carlo. Um, (laughs) I'm sure he's listening. But, yeah, but um, but yeah. So then I I flipped out some more and I put something on Facebook. I probably shouldn't have. I did say that I would machete off each one of his freckles. Oh my god! <laughs> Which come on, that's not nobody can actually do that. Clearly, I was being dramatic, I but mean, they fired me. But th- I feel okay. So here's the thing, right? I think that that's what makes it scary when you say things like that can't be actually be done. It has that extra oomph of like, oh, no, she's serious. Yeah, well, I feel like it's like it's like if you were to say, I'll cut off your balls and put them in a blender. Like, you're clearly not going to do it. It's just a thing you say. <laughs> well, either way, it all happened because this guy didn't like me because I wouldn't show him my boobs. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> that's the that's the whole thing that started it is the whole reason he decided to mess with me. And uh, so anyway, so I got fired. So... I knew that they had a long history of misogyny at this place. Um, like there was a bunch of other stuff that happened. Like there were a bunch of women who were fired because they like just spurred advances and stuff like that. And I was like, you know what? They might have had to take it. I don't. I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get revenge on their behalf. So what'd you do? So this guy, he had uh, a jeep. Right now, I don't, I don't know if you know about jeeps. They can't really be like protected very well. No, why? They're just, oh, they're just open. Oh, the like one of the soft tops, you mean? Yeah, one of the soft tops. He never had the soft top on. So he had a Jeep. I knew where he parked it. Um, so I went, and my whole plan was I was going to drain the air from his tires. Right. So that when he went home at four in the morning, he had no air. But uh, I found out that was real tedious because <laughs> I was just doing it. Because you just stick something into the the, the thing where you put the, the air. Right. And then it slowly drains out. But, um, yeah, so that was taking a long time. But while I was doing that, one of the local kids who, who like, you know, I always would give water to and be nice to was like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm draining the air from this guy's tires. And he's like, oh, you don't like him? And I was like, no. And he's like, well, if you don't like him, I don't like him either. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so, he was so a he day like, one. Wa- yeah, he, like, walks away and he comes back. I didn't know what he was doing. Right. And he comes back with a bottle of ketchup. <laughs> Now, this guy had a white interior on his jeep. No. So he takes the bottle of ketchup and he starts dumping it all over the guy's chairs. And I was like, oh, we're getting serious here. Oh, no. (laughs) But I was also kind of like, I don't know. I'm not doing it. So it is a little bit fun. (laughs) Right. And then I like watched him put it down his air conditioner and stuff. And I was like, "Ooh, that's a lot. You're doing a lot in the end. Um. I was the one who was apparently the one who did it, according to the police. Right. I They had just installed cameras in this parking lot. I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> but because this kid was a cruising kid who lives in, there's like different parts of St. Croix where, where like the, the gangs run them. Right. So he lived in a, he lived in a part where that the gangs ran. And so cops don't go there because they're afraid of the gangs. Mm-hmm. And I, on the other hand, was very recognizable. <laughs> so they knew right away it was me. I also lived in a house. You didn't like 
basically you don't have addresses there, so they couldn't find me. Right. So I was wanted. I was wanted by the police. Oh my god! <laughs> but they couldn't find me. Everybody kept messaging me that uh, I better pay for him to detail his car, and then he'll drop charges. And I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, no, he got me fired from my job. I don't have a job now. Right. He messed with my money. Now he has to spend money. That's how it works. In right. my, in my, you know. Yeah. The Rules of the street. That, that seems fair. <laughs> eye for an eye. Rules of the street. I'm from Patterson, New Jersey. We don't, we don't mess around <laughs> like that. Oh my God. Like, like you thought you were going to mess with me? Oh no, you're not going to mess with me. But anyway, so in the meantime, I had also met this Australian guy who had just bought a boat. And so he was going on a, uh, like a trip to the, to the British Virgin Islands with a bunch of friends. So I messaged him and I said, Hey, I need to get out of here. Can I go on your boat trip with you? Right. So he said, do you, do you have any skills? And I was like, yeah, I can cook. And he says, okay, good enough. You're on board. So I end up taking this boat cruise with him. And then let me see one, two, three, four, hold on. Six men. May I, may yeah. I pause you here for a second? So yes. First off, a lot has happened to this point. But so I'm going to ask you questions later about the other stuff. But just on this mm-hmm. detail alone, how well did you know these guys, and what did you know about them? Like, how did you actually meet? I only knew the one. I had met him at. Oh, I met him because he had technically rescued my roommate at the time, because my roommate was on a boat at an island that because there's like an island like near Saint Croix that everybody goes and they hang out at, and. He had rescued my roommate because my roommate had gone out there and the captain he was with got drunk. So he didn't want to he didn't want to come back with that guy. And so this other guy, the Australian, said, oh, I'll give you a ride back to the island. So then they were all hanging out. My roommate texted me. And he goes, you got to come meet this guy. I think you guys will hit it off. So I went and I met him. And he was like trying to make out with me and stuff. And I was just like, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think we we did we did do the deed at some point. I don't know if it was like a day or two later, but either way, we I think we had had sex at 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 the time when I asked him to be on the boat with him. So that's that's fine, whatever. And then the rest of the guys I didn't know; they were just his friends or people he knew. Like there was a guy from Florida, there was a guy from Italy, there was a guy from England. Um, there was an oh, there was another guy from Italy as well. And, um, and then there was me. <laughs> so it was a bunch of men and it was me. <laughs> I was like, well, this is an adventure. You're like the queen bee. <laughs> right. Yeah. But right before I got on the boat, something kind of, we had a weird conversation. I found out later, cause I lived in Australia later. I found out later Australians do not understand jokes and sarcasm. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> see, I knew, I know any Australian or anybody who's like, they're not going to agree with that, but it's, it's totally true. Cause what I said to him Cause he was a very, like he loved drinking champagne and he would do very like slightly romantic things that were just him. Mm-hmm. And so I said to him, I said, I don't want to necessarily want to say his name, but I was like, Oh, such and such. And in a very Scarlett O'Hara accent, I go, Oh, I could, I could just see myself falling deeply, madly in love with you. Oh, and he no. like stopped uh-huh. and he goes, Oh, um, we should talk. And I was like, no, no, I was joking. I was just joking. <laughs> I just met you. You live in Indonesia. I don't know. Nope, just kidding. And he goes, well, I just want you to know, like, I know you're going on this trip with me and everything, but like, I really don't, I'm not looking for anything serious and like, whatever, whatever. And I was like, okay, yeah, we don't really need to talk about that. And he like made it very clear to me that basically I was just his like boat hoe. I was like, oh, okay. Now that you put it in words, right. Kind of, ru- it's kind of rubbing me the wrong way. Like until you said it, not really a big deal. But when you felt the need to have to say it, then it like kind of set this weird tone. So got on the boat, me and him were hooking up and whatever. I was living in his room with him, but his best friend who was on the, the trip with us, um, starts hitting on me. And I was like, oh, this is weird. But his best friend, who's from England, was a coach for the New York City Red Bulls. So his friend actually lived in New York City. So for me, I was going back to New York City soon. I knew that. And so for me, it made way more sense to be with this guy. So I kind of let him, you know, seduce me. And we started like hooking up in secret a little bit. And then eventually he caught us and we were just like, hey, bada, bada, bada. So he kind of, he was cool about it. 
And he was like, you know what? That's fine. Clearly, I'm not looking for anything serious. You, you, if you two like each other, go like each other. So I was like, very chill of you. Awesome. So that, that night, <laughs> I switched rooms and I went to this other guy's room. And that night was also the Tortola Full Moon Festival. What's that? Um, it's just like a party where everybody drinks mushroom tea and stuff. Okay. And they celebrate the full moon. It's like a thing in the islands, but it's a, it's like a big party. And so at this, this big party, uh, the guy who I left the captain for his best friend, uh, starts hitting on this chick. And I was like, whatever, cool. Not a big deal. Not going to freak out. And then at the end of the night though, he wouldn't come back with us because he was going to go to this chick's hotel room. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I literally almost like risked a bunch of sh- stuff right to to be with you i'm not saying i want to be your girlfriend right away but maybe spend like one night with me <laughs> like uh-huh. maybe don't go have sex with somebody else immediately right so i went back to the boat and like you know as you do when you're frustrated and it's a full moon i just like screamed at the top of my lungs <laughs> i cry <laughs> i cry i cried a little bit uh and then I slept in the in the bed with like the, the captain and I was like, look, I feel so stupid. I can't believe this happened to me. You know, I should have never trusted him, blah, blah, blah. But in the end, that was the captain's best buddy. And I was not. So in the morning, he said, hey, I think it's best if you uh, leave. And I was really hungover and really upset. I was just like, oh, okay. So I got like my backpack and stuff and he dropped me off at the dock in Tortola. And I like, I was like, okay. And then I like walked towards the, (laughs) towards the street. And then I go, wait, how do I get home? (laughs) Hold on. Let's back up a a little bit here. Yeah. (laughs) Hold on. Yeah. Just, so I just walk me through this. This is the first thing I want to understand. You started off in St. Croix. Mm -hmm. Right. So you got on the boat. Were you island hopping the different islands in the Caribbean, or were you circling Saint Croix? Let's let's figure. No, that no, out. we were island hopping. So we went to, um, we were in, we were at the time we were in the British Virgin Islands. So we had gone to Saint Martin, Saint Thomas. So Saint Thomas is a seven-hour boat ride. So like got we it. we were we were like far from Saint Croix at this point. Like we were, and we were in a foreign country because we were in, we were technically in in, you know. There was the British Virgin Islands, so it's England right. at that point. Oh, the American... Excuse my ignorance here. I, I really don't know. So the American Virgin Islands, you don't need anything but a U.S. passport and you're fine? No, you don't need anything but a but a driver's license and you're fine. Got it. So now, did you have a passport on you? I had a passport on me. Um, and yes, so I was technically in a foreign country. I did have a passport on me. I didn't have a ton of money. Mm-hmm. And I didn't actually know where I was, really. <laughs> Like, I knew I was in Tortola, but I didn't know how far that was from St. Croix. I didn't really know what I was supposed to be doing. I don't know if my phone even worked at that point. I think my phone didn't work at that point because I was uh, was technically in a foreign country. Right. (laughs) And... And so I walked into a restaurant. I told the women there what happened. And they go, oh, honey. <laughs> they were just like, <laughs> but, it, but in a very Caribbean way, they're like, oh, that mother skunt. <laughs> you know, like, they were just like, ooh. So they did not like that guy. But um, they, I was like, how do I get home? And they were like, oh, well, you, you're on the wrong side of the island. So you have to take a cab to the other side. And then you can take a ferry to, I think I, I took a ferry to St. Thomas. Yeah, and then from St. Thomas, I had to take a seaplane. <laughs> oh, okay, so you so you said you didn't have a lot of money. How, how did you pay for this stuff? Um. Oh, I, with my last amount of dollars that I had. <laughs> Got it. I used I used up all the money I had. Jeez, if only they didn't take the twelve dollars from you at this point, right? <laughs> mm hmm. Right. I could have used that twelve dollars. <laughs> that could have been cab fare, right? But uh, but yeah. So that's and then I went back and I still had like a week because I was supposed to still be on the boat for a week. So I had I had a babysitting job that I did. So I still had a week before I even got back to that whole thing. And um, and I literally just sat at home, just kind of like processing what had happened to me. And I was like, Jesus Christ, what am I doing? <laughs> so soon after that, I did move back home. Okay, so. Okay, a few questions here. Yes, go for it. So, when when you say you got home, you mean back to St. Croix? Back to St. Croix, yeah. But wasn't the police looking for you still? Yeah, they gave up after like a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been to the Caribbean. They don't really do a lot of stuff. They just kind of like, like, okay, basically, if you 
if the police are passing you and you clearly have an illegal car, they will not pull you over because that means they have to turn around. If you pass them and they're like pulling out of something, then they'll pull you over because then it's easy for them. Got it. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And yeah. Okay. So, so how long were you actually on the boat? A week. A week. And what about the other guys? So they were watching this going on and like, they were just like, okay, I guess those two are just, you know, having fun and we're not. Is that what was going on there? So the other guys, I ended up like, I'm still good friends with the the Italian guy. I actually ended up, um, I went and I lived with him for a month. <laughs> um, we were buddies, but, uh, he was just kind of, he thought that basically I, he, it, th- a lot, most of them just thought it wasn't their business. They were just like, Oh, whatever. And like, he thought I was a little crazy. And, and for a while he had this weird opinion of it that I kind of just forgave him for, but he, for a while was like, Oh, Caitlin, well, you shouldn't be being slutty. He's like, you need to find love. You need to do this. You need to do that. And I was like, no, what they did to me wasn't okay. Right. <laughs> I was like, that, it was a, it was a really messed up situation on their part, not my part. And it took me like, like I'm 35 now. And that happened to me when I was like, what, like 25, 26. And it took me until like, I got into adulthood to go, wait a minute. That was very much not okay <laughs> <laughs> on anybody's part. Right. And, and, and like, honestly, I ended up in the same city that the captain was from when I lived in Australia. And like, I, became friends with a lot of his friends and it was it was really weird and awkward because I couldn't talk about the fact that he did this terrible thing <laughs> you know oh so you ran into him again no I never saw him again but I saw his friends and I had talked to him every now and then and it just was really hard for like I tried to forgive him so many times but I realized at some point that it was kind of a very unforgivable thing. And I just didn't think he ever s- truly felt sorry. Right. And it's, it, and it sucks because he did have, he, he had always attracted a very interesting um, group of people who I very much like, like I really liked um, all of his friends that, that were from his hometown. I like really liked the, the Italian guy that, that I ended up, being good friends with, but I kind of had to put my friendships with the people associated with him on a different level. Like I was like, Oh, well those are, those are my friends too. So even though I met them because of him. Wait, so I don't know if this is a separate story, so I don't want to go too much into this, but Mm -hmm. how did you end up in Australia? Was it, was it because of friends that you met through him or like just pure coincidence that you ended up in that same town? Yeah, pure coincidence. I ended up, I picked Australia to move to. I picked the other side of Australia. I picked Sydney and I ended up losing my job in Sydney and I um, found a really good job in Perth, which is where he was from, which is on the other side of Australia. But I decided it made more sense to move there and have this job where I would make way more money. Um, And yeah, it just was pure coincidence that I was like, oh, this is where he's from. All right, so then... Okay, so you get back home, you're processing everything, the police has given up, they're not looking for you anymore. Not looking for me. <laughs> yeah. And then what happened? You just went back to regular life and started babysitting? Yeah, yeah. No, well, I mean, there was a little blowback, because then when I tried to get other restaurant jobs, I found out that, that the original restaurant had um, lied and told everybody that I got fired because I stole from them which I didn't. Right. So any, uh, any job I got a job and then they, they told them that. So they fired me and then I couldn't get any other jobs. Um, I got a job with my friend, John who owned a restaurant, but like he was only just opening it and it was just not, it was not enough work. And, and so like, it, I just couldn't, I just didn't make enough money to stay there. So that's why I ended up going home because they kind of pretty much ruined my job prospects. Got and the it. family I was nannying for was moving back to to the states. So, well, actually, let's. So that's another question. How did you end up in Saint Croix to begin with? Like, why why did you end up on that island? Um, my best friend at the time lived there. So, I mean, it's a long story. She ended up <laughs> uh, <laughs> tragedy like begets tragedy. She ended up getting a really bad accident, so she had to move back home about a month into me living there. Got it. So, so I pretty much moved there for her and then lived there by myself. 
Wow. Okay. Mm, yeah. So what I'm learning is that you're just full of stories. I'm going to have to have you back. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, my, sometimes people hear the things that happen in my life and they're like, there's no way this is real. <laughs> Your life is this like this. And I'm like, yep. No. I, wow. Okay. So, so this is the fun part of the podcast for a lot of people, right? This is one of my personal favorite parts, right? Mm-hmm. I want you to retell me the story, right? But you get to revise it, use your vision and, it's a revision, you know, it's the revisionary history now of your story. Like, so what, if you could change the facts and alter them, what would have happened? How th- would the story have happened? Okay, first of all, that first part of the story would have still happened the same exact way. <laughs> I would have still <laughs> vandalized the the crap out of his Jeep because he deserved it. He's still it. putting ketchup I'm, in it. I have never regretted that a day in my goddamn life. <laughs> I would do it again in a goddamn heartbeat. <laughs> right. I still would not have shown him my boobs in in the freezer, uh, in the walk-in cooler. Um, I mean, maybe I would not have said that I would machete off his freckles. So, mm-hmm. right. there's that. Maybe maybe that was a little far, but I was mad. I would have still gone on the boat, but I don't think I would have slept with any of them. Okay. I think I would have had sex with none of them. But hold on. So... But you said that uh, that you slept with the captain before you went on the boat, right? Mm-hmm. So do you think they still would have invited you on the boat? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I do. Because he, he ended up, um, he, he sailed this boat to a lot of different places. And although he did have women on that he slept with again, he also had a lot of women on that he hadn't slept with. And that he, I don't think... Like I said, he's a he's a, a jackass, but he's not a full jackass. So I think he would have still been cool with me being on the boat, even okay. if I hadn't slept with him. But I'm a very <laughs> sexual person, so a lot of times me and sex go hand in hand, but it gets me in trouble. <laughs> right, right, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've learned my lesson. I I pick and I choose now, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is a judgment free zone, honestly. So you don't have to justify <laughs> to me. Okay, so. So you, so you would have gotten on the boat. What uh, what else would have been different? Um, let's see. What else would have been different? I well, hopefully, if I if I hadn't slept with them, I would have been on the boat for longer. Right. So I would have got I would have gotten to see way more of the British Virgin Islands. I still say this. I regret not being able to see more of the British Virgin Islands. And also, they did a lot of trips afterwards that um they that i would have been able to go on like i was when i was in australia i was supposed to go to raja Ampat. i think that's how you say it and he had put it up through the group like all mm-hmm. these people there have been like a hundred people on the boat at, at this point you know had, had been through the, and this is actually honestly when i was just like completely done with him um i was living i think i was living in australia at that time and i and i told him i wanted to go on on that trip and he right. i had asked him i was like would that be okay and we hadn't really had a falling out at that point it was just kind of like we had this weird thing and i forgave him and whatever whatever and he said yes of course you can come on the boat so i was like great i really want to go on this trip my other friend from italy who i had lived with was going on it so i was like i really want to see him um and i want to be with like my friend and so he agreed to it and then all of a sudden like before we, i was supposed to go on the trip he was like, actually, um, there are a lot of pirates in that ocean, which there are. It was around Indonesia, just so there are a lot of pirates. He's like, I really wouldn't feel comfortable having a, having a woman on board. And I was like, I was like, dude, I lived in the Virgin Islands. It's really dangerous there. And he was like, no, no, you don't understand. Like, they'll kidnap you and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, fine. If you really think it's unsafe, that's whatever. And then I come to find out when they posted all the pictures from the trip, there was a woman on the boat. <laughs> Oh, he just didn't specifically want you on the on the trip. Yeah. Yeah. And then he said, well, that was different. Her boyfriend was there. And I was like, no, that's not different. She's still a woman. Why would that make a difference? And I was like, look, dude, you could have at any point told me that we weren't cool. I would have just been fine with it and just been over trying to be friends with you anymore. Because this is years, like this is like three right. years later or something. And I was like, I never needed to be friends with you. I just didn't want to have bad blood with anyone. So at that point, I was just like, you know what? You can go screw yourself. And then he was also in, he was in Perth when I was in Perth. Mm-hmm. And he didn't, he right. didn't say hi to me. We're in the same city. And he was well, like, oh, I didn't have any time. And I was like, okay, cool. So, 
Hold on, and I know you mentioned earlier that you know you didn't run into him. Were you actively trying to avoid him and vice versa? No, I wasn't trying to avoid him. I would have really liked to see him in person and like talk it out three years later and just like like I'm the kind I'm like a dude. Like, give me a fist fight, let's hug afterwards, let's drink a beer, let's never talk about it again. But he kind of just wouldn't give it to me. He kept being fake like a chick. He kept pretending. <laughs> I was like, dude, you don't like me. Just friggin' tell me you don't like me. That's fine. But also don't pretend like you do. Because you don't. Do you, do you think that that's a, like a part of... I, see, I don't know too many Australians, so so keep that in mind. Is that part of the mm-hmm. Australian culture? Like, uh, they won't be blunt enough to say, like, I just dislike you? Or is that him? Um. Yeah, Australians don't... They have a... All right, so there's this saying in Australia, um, you're on your own, mate, which mm-hmm. means anything that happens to you is your problem. So they don't... Basically, they don't care about you. And if they don't know you, and if you're not a family member, and if you're not somebody they've been friends with for like years and years, like since high school kind of years, like you have to... They, they need to see you as somebody who's been in their circle forever in order to even care about you. And because I wasn't, he didn't actually care about me. He didn't, he could, he could have cared less whether yeah. we were friends or not, or whether he dropped me off in the middle of nowhere and just expected me to get home. Like, what if I didn't have any money? I could have literally, I could have been, now there I could have been kidnapped. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's ironic that he was worried about you with the pirates, but didn't care when he dropped you off on the island. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because then, because that was fine. Like, I was hung over on a foreign island that I'd never been to, you know, with nobody. I, like, I was all by myself. Like, that's insane. Right. No, I, wow. Let, let me ask you this. Do you regret uh, making that joke about, you know, being able to see yourself with him forever? Mm, no, I don't think that part I regret. Because I think that's still within it's within my personality to pre- pretend to be characters and to do that whole thing so if it wasn't that moment there would have been some other moment where i would have made a, another joke that he just decided that he needed to make it clear right <laughs> you know like i don't think that would have been the only time that that happened well do you think that that joke is what led you to uh, pursue his best friend or you do you think that even without that you probably would have pursued him anyway because it made more sense um, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I think there was something in me that clicked when, he, when that, um, exchange happened that kind of just, and it almost is a little bit of a, well, okay, screw you then. Then I okay. can do whatever I want. And it wasn't like a, I'm going to sleep with your best friend in order to make you jealous. But when the, when it presented itself, I was like, well, Apparently, I'm a very free woman. (laughs) So let me go ahead and be free with this one. Right. Wow. And okay. And just so I understand. So there was a point where like you were hooking up with his best friend. He knew about it, but you were just sleeping in his room. No, the moment the moment he found out about it, um, I switched rooms. So I had I mean, I I wasn't having sex with both of them at the same time at any point even if you were that's none of my business (laughs) no no but i but i wasn't i uh i had only hooked up with his best friend like once i think maybe twice like we we had kissed so it had been it had been going on for like maybe like a day or two got it and it was like the night before we hooked up and then the next day was when he he found out about it got it and how big was this boat that, you know, you were able to keep it a secret for a little bit? It was a catamaran, which is, I don't know if you know what a catamaran is. It's like kind of like one of those boats that's flat. Um, so there were four rooms in it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So so it was kind of big. <laughs> you know, I, like, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't know too much about boats. Uh, I've only been on pontoons <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> little speed boats to go fishing. So that's all I know about boats. Um. Boating life is interesting, and there, yeah, there is not a lot of crossover, which why it only, which, which is why it only took him like a day to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, imagine it sounds like his room was just like right down the hall. No, his room was literally across the way. Jeez, <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> that I don't no, it's not well, I'm not judging you. I'm just thinking like putting myself in those situations. I feel like I would have been nervous. Like, oh no, they're going to find out. They're going to find out. They're too close. They're too close. Well, honestly, I didn't, I wasn't that nervous about him finding out because I also felt like he was a very sexually free person. Like, I don't know. I have a lot of friends who are uh, in the, in like the kink community and stuff. So for me, I was just like, oh yeah, he just seems like the kind of person that would be fine with this. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the way, I mean, the way he kept saying things like, I mean, I'm not. I'm actually not that uh, that crazy a person when it when it comes to the the sex. And he he kept wanting to like do it on like the bow of the boat. And I was like, we live with like seven other people. Are you insane? <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not gonna let you have sex with me on the back of the boat. Like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. And so like that that being that he continually seemed to be that kind of person, I was like, oh, I don't think I'll care if I have sex with his best friend. <laughs> Right, right. None of okay. That, see, that makes a lot more sense. I I didn't know that part of his personality. I, in my head, I'm just like, wow, you know, she she has no fear. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, he just he just and he genuinely was okay with it once he found out. The thing the thing that turned it for him was that I freaked out that his best friend was going to have sex with somebody else, and so he took. Even though, and honestly, when you look back at it, I'm like, he took his best friend's side over me. But his best friend seduced his girl, technically. <laughs> like, I was having yeah. sex with his... I was having sex with the captain. So, basically, what he did is he went about a real dirty, mean trick. Like, he didn't say, hey, can I also have sex with Caitlin? He, he like, went behind his back. Yeah, I guess I, I, I had not considered that part. But, I mean, it seems to me like if he was that cool with it, it probably wasn't the first time. They probably did it back and forth. I don't know. I'm guessing. I have... I have no idea because he never met up with me to talk about it and have a goddamn beer. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. And okay. And did you ever get any like, obviously you got closure on the wrestling. That's not what I mean. But like, did you ever fi- like what happened with that guy? Like he just had ketchup spewing out of his seat. Like what happened there? Do you, did you ever find out? Oh yeah. He had to pay to get his own car detailed. <laughs> Because he was he was moving off <laughs> island too, so he had to sell it. So he got it detailed, and uh, that's what he was trying to make me pay for. And I was like, no. And I mean, he ended up he married the girl. Oh, so it worked out. He well, I mean, he used to cheat on her all the time. I'm sure he still cheats on her. If that bitch right. is listening, <laughs> <laughs> Mikey, Mikey was cheating on you, girl. She knew. I'm but sure he. She still just cheats. didn't care. <laughs> she she did care. She just thought she had gotten a catch, you know, because he was the yeah. he was like the the person to date. And I'm like, yeah, no, he's not. He's a bartender in the Virgin Islands who's cheating on you constantly. Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Fair enough. To each his own. Yeah. To each his own. Yeah. Okay. So then the last part of this that we'll jump into is: Do you think that, like, outside from some of the obvious, like, what specifically? Were you would you hoping would have changed with the changes to your story? Um, oh, like what what would have changed? I think um, what would have changed is there wouldn't be quite so much animosity between us. Like I I know I still have a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> You're still angry ten years later. I'm, I'm still a little angry ten years later. Um, I don't necessarily think they are. Or he is, but. I don't know. I just, I don't like negativity, <laughs> even though a comedian and I roast people all the time and stuff. Right. I, I don't like maliciousness. And I feel like there was, there was a lot of negativity and maliciousness involved in that whole situation. And I just kind of, I think if, if things had been different, there would be no, you know, toxic cloud that still exists a bit. So first off, th- I want to thank you for coming on the show. I, Really appreciate it. I actually really enjoyed your story. I was looking forward oh, to it. thank you. <laughs> um, so I like to end every show by uh, catching people a little off guard with this question. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't tell you about this. Okay. <laughs> what's, uh, what's one happy memory or story or a story that puts a smile on your face from your childhood? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> happy childhood. Um, <laughs> I guess... All right, so there's a story where um, I don't know. Do you, I don't know if you know anything about Patterson, New Jersey, but 
there are waterfalls in, in Patterson and now they're blocked off and you can't get onto them. And probably for this reason, my dad, when I was a kid, right, <laughs> he took me and my brothers to the Patterson falls and we climbed the falls <laughs> Mm-hmm. myself and my brother were climbing and then my youngest brother was on my dad's back uh i don't necessarily remember remember it but i like the story because it's very much my dad we're like it was super dangerous and then when he got home he told my mom about it and she was like you cannot take a baby rock climbing and he was like, no. <laughs> no he liked it he was on my back he was having fun the whole time and she was like what if the kids the other kids have fallen and he was like Oh, yeah, they were. They were going to fall. They're good at climbing rocks. Like, literally, <laughs> not not like scrambling, like full on sheer face, like, let's climb this rock. Um, and I guess that's that's kind of a, that's a fond memory, a fond <laughs> story. No, that, that that is a good memory. Um, do you have any uh, last words for our listeners? Before, uh, uh, you go? No, just fo- follow me on social media. Uh, it's C-A-I-T-L-A-N R-U-P-P-E-R-T. I am on Twitter and Instagram. Um, listen to my podcast, Pod After Lockup. And yeah, I'm fun on Twitter. I I, I, uh, I unleash some, some stuff. <laughs> well, thank you very much for being on, Caitlin. I really appreciated you having as a guest. Take care. Thank you for having me. Bye. The Revisionary Podcast. Wow, I really enjoyed that one. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. Before we started, I was not aware that I was going to get a story with pirates and traveling and going on all these different boats and having all these adventures. But I'm really glad that we actually spoke to Caitlin. And if you really enjoyed her, please, please follow her online and go listen to her podcast and go support all of her work. Now, with that being said, as you know, on this podcast, we have a tradition of picking out a charity or an organization to support after every episode. For uh, Caitlin's episode, we're actually going to uh, support the Women's Coalition of St. Croix. They are an organization which is dedicated to ending violence in the community and assisting victims and survivors of domestic violence. So go ahead and support them. As always, the link is in the description of the show. And if you really enjoyed the show, please like us and subscribe and rate us. You know, those ratings really help us and help support the podcast. If you have any interesting stories that you'd like to share, feel free to email us at Revisionary Podcast and make sure that you're following us on all social media sites. Again, this is Juan Carlos, and thank you for listening. This is-